and they see us, the citizens, as enemies, just like the picture said. What's up, everybody? Severin standing out here. We just came to the premiere of Peace Officer. Um, we're here on behalf of copblock.org. We're going to be doing some interviews out here to see what everybody felt about this movie. Um, I personally just sat through it. I found it was very informative. It was pretty powerful. It was very touching. So um, we'll be right back. You just saw the premiere of Peace Officer, correct? Right. Um, can you uh, tell me what your name is? Lynn Hopshaw. Okay. Um, what is your what is your feeling about the movie? How did you feel after like coming in, and how did you feel coming out? Well, going in, I felt that uh, we were going to see exactly what we saw, and coming out, I was pleased that we did. And like I said, I used to train the Philadelphia police. I think it's very difficult. Police don't earn a lot of money. They put their life on the line every day of the week. And without a respect for law and order, a society is doomed. But at the same time, there needs to be a respect and an education that says that uh, brutal force uh, should be used under very specific circumstances. I think if you watch the news today, uh, America is frightening. We've had over 45 instances, I think, of murders with people with guns going to schools and shooting innocent people and that's another part of it and the question is how to resolve both sides and it's not an easy answer. So do you think that the film is uh, pretty informative as far as bringing accountability to the officers that that do use too much force and at the same time showing it from their point of view? Uh, uh, me personally, I thought it looked, it was pretty good at showing both sides. I thought it was fair, and it did show both sides, and it was interesting that the narrator uh, really was on both sides. Yeah. And had a personal um, stake in what happened, as well as um, was on the side of the law. So it's, um, it's interesting from that point of view. So do you feel that there should be some changes in how SWAT teams conduct their raids? Not just SWAT teams. I think police education is important. Um, it's not just SWAT teams. And my husband's always talked about community police, that when we grew up, the, the cop on the beat was our friend. You know, we walked to school, he said hello, he knew your name. You trusted him, he was the person you looked to if you had a problem. And today, and I think it's unfortunate, the other element that's been injected is the racial issue. And I think that's kind of muddied the water because um, that may be a piece in some communities, but that's not the whole story. Right. All right, well, I thank you for your time today. Well, thank you. I hope the film uh, enlightens people and gets good turnout for it. What's your name? Emil Hubschman. And uh, do you have any history in law enforcement? No, I don't, but I come at this from a different perspective. Uh, we spend a good part of the year in South Florida. In Aventura, Florida, which is now celebrating its 20th anniversary this November, uh, the police in Aventura are part of a federal SWAT team. And if you open the trunk of a given squad car, and this is a small city in Aventura, Aventura is a small city in Florida, of 35,000 people. Mm -hmm. And 35,000 people, uh, we have a police force of 84 police officers. This is a three and a quarter square mile city, so the police have nothing to do except slow their weight around. And all day long is one of my pet peeves. They never get out of the car and direct traffic. And at a city council meeting, I asked the police chief, why don't they, all the world police direct traffic, all the world, that's part of the responsibility. And the police chief stood up and he said, you know, it's much too dangerous for my men to get out of the car and direct traffic. And so they, they are very intimidating. And just one quick story. I have a friend, a close friend of mine, who is from Columbia. And he's been in this country for 25 years. Anyway, on Christmas Eve, 
he went to pick up his sister at, uh, at the Amateur Mall, which is the mall. And he was stuck in traffic. He was driving at five miles an hour, tops. And all of a sudden, the police dragged him out of the car, physically dragged him out of the car, threw him in jail. And as soon as they heard his Spanish accent, they said, you got to be carrying drugs. And the trumped up charge was, you ran over my foot. And it just, and they just have overbearing. Uh, last spring, uh, a fellow was running out of the Target store with a video game. Mm. He's running out of, the, out of the store, getting store, stealing the game. The police came there. He was not confronting the police. And the police saw him running with the things. They shot in, a, in an open parking lot over his head, thank God. Didn't hit him. But they opened fire and opened in a public parking lot. And they got away with it. The city hushes this up, and nothing is done. And, but I'm saying the main issue is the uh, amateur police are part of a federal SWAT team. So a given squad car is full of submachine guns and all the sort of thing we saw in the picture. Cam camouflage. And no, there's no responsibility. And they see us, the citizens, as enemies, just like the picture said. And so they're not there to protect... It's a very quiet community, it's, uh, it's no, no crime, yeah. that, that all. so they're bored. Mm -hmm. But they're constantly uh, harassing uh, for traffic violation. They come up to cars with almost like, they don't draw their pistols, but they could, might as well. They did draw the pistol on my friend. And it's just, it's a hostile environment. They're not our friends, and that's what's going on in this picture. Mm -hmm. So it really so far hand what's going on. And I think it was great that you did it in Utah, because it's an all-white audience, mm -hmm. so you can't get all this thing, well, it's a black-white issue or a racial issue. It was shown, and this is what's happening in Utah. And it's great that it happened in Utah. It needs to be done all across the country.